Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a condition that will guarantee the existence of what's called a Hamiltonian circuit in a graph. So what is a Hamiltonian circuit? Well, it's a cycle or a path th um, throughout the graph that um, hits every single vertex exactly once except when it goes all the way back around the beginning. Then it hits that twice, of course, once at the beginning and once at the end. So it's some pathway throughout, throughout the graph. So <clears throat> um, our condition is, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna actually, as we draw this, the cycle or the circuit, we're gonna create directions. So before the directions are there, we're just going to assume that the graph we start with is undirected. So let G be undirected. And let's impose a condition. We're going to pose a condition that every vertex has a lot of neighbors. Um, in fact, we're going to impose the condition that every vertex has at least n over two neighbors. Um, that are adjacent to it um, eat for, for each vertex. All right, where n is the, the number of vertices in the graph G, if G is thought of as a set of vertices, but it also has edges in there. But anyway, so let's let n be the, um, the number of vertices, all right, in the graph. Okay, so what we're gonna do in order to prove this idea is um, first, um, let's take a path in the that's using edges in the graph and, this, and let's take it of maximal length such that it doesn't double back and revisit um, a vertex more than one time, just exactly one time. But let's also say it's just a path. It does, um, it's not going to wrap around back on itself, at least not quite yet. So let's take a path, maybe call it P, and suppose this path is of maximal length. So as a maximal possible length that such um, a path can have that doesn't um, visit uh, a vertex more than once. Okay, um, so let's take that um, and let's suppose that we choose it of maximal length. Now that we're assuming, of course, that G is, has a finite number of vertices. Okay, so this is going to be a finite number, so we can find a maximal length um, path. Okay, now let's in particular look at the first guy and the last guy in this path. Now, um, what if the first guy, V1, has a neighbor that's adjacent to outside of the path? Well, that means you can extend the path, which uh, contradicts the fact that we chose something of maximal length. Same idea applies for this guy. So we don't want that. In other words, everything that's adjacent to V1, VL actually already is in here in the path. That says a few things about this path. Um, in particular, if you include V1 and all of its neighbors, this path is um, at least n over two plus one vertices long. We haven't made it all the way up to n, which is kind of what we need for a Hamiltonian circuit, but look, we're making some progress. We already are here. And also we still don't know it's a circuit, we just know it's a path. But we're making some progress. Okay, so we know that the number of things in here is n is, is at least that. So we're going to have more than that in this maximal um, length path that we've determined. Now, for next, the next step is actually to see that we can make a circuit out of this path. And we're going to use some of the ideas that um, we're going to use some of the ideas that we've already come up with. Um, so all right, so let's think about this for a minute. Um, if we have V1 is the first guy and 
VL is the last guy, all right? And then this path kind of comes around here, you know, who knows how many of these there are, but it comes around. Now, what we'd like to show is that um, we can find a pair of two adjacent vertices such that we can do a little swap here, V1 here, VL there, and then if we erase this, look, we actually get a cycle. All right, so what we need to do is we need to find a pair of vertices in our path such that we can cross over like this. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, at, the at all adjacent pairs. All right, adjacent pairs. Now, since there's n things in our graph or n vertices in our graph, um, the maximal number of uh, of adjacent pairs is like the maximal number of edges in a tree even um, of n things. So it's gonna have one less edge. So n minus one is the maximal number of pairs. And if you had that, I mean, you'd actually have covered all the things in the, in the graph. Um, so that's, uh, you can't have any more adjacent pairs than this. We're gonna use that idea. Also, um, we'll use, Okay, also we'll use the idea that all of the neighbors of V1 are in here, which mean um, if you want a, so let's look at all of our different adjacent, let's look at all the different possibilities. That means V1 is gonna, is gonna be able to be connected to the beginning of how many of these pairs? Well, um, well, to the beginning of at least uh, uh, n over two. So there's at least n over two adjacent pairs where v1, um, well, actually, we don't want v1 to go to the beginning. We want v1 to go to the end. Ah, actually, so it could even go to the first guy. Okay, yes. So connected to the end. Uh -huh. Okay, v, because we're doing the crossover. So there's n over two adjacent pairs where v1 um, is linked to the last guy, to the end of the pair. Um, and, um, and well, likewise, the same idea here, there are n over two adjacent pairs where VL is linked to the beginning. All right. Um, now, what if these adjacent pairs and these adjacent pairs didn't have any intersection at all? Well, then uh, wait, you'd have like n adjacent pairs. That's too many. Remember, we said that, that was the maximum number. So that means there's at least one set of adjacent pairs where these uh, you actually have that crossover. And when you have that crossover, we just visualized how we could make a cycle. Great. Okay. Well, how does that help? At least we know that our maximal path that we just talked about, we know a few things about it. All right, our maximal path can actually be changed into a cycle, okay, that goes around. And we know that this has at least um, n over two plus one uh, different vertices in it. But we, have, we might have other vertices out here. Let's think about that. What if we had another vertex out here? Now, um, since this, okay, so let's think about how we can work with that case. If we have a vertex that's outside of this cycle. Well, um, this graph is connected, which means that this as a subgraph is somehow connected to um, something outside. So let's just take maybe um, um, so that means since this subgraph of this path right here is connected to everything else out here, there's at least one edge that comes from one of these guys um, out into something else. Otherwise, it would be disconnected, and we want this graph to be connected. Okay, so let's go outside there. Maybe there's one place that will go outside there, and we know that if this is not the whole graph. Okay. Well, um, 
what does that mean? So this is connected to this um, right here. Um, well, how can we kind of expand this idea and what we're doing? Okay, I was just thinking for a second and I realized that um, in this particular in this particular situation, why don't we just think of this idea? What if we just kind of take this away right here, um, take one of the edges away, then we have a path of maximal length. Now, if this guy were adjacent to something else, there'd be a problem. Our path would be longer than the path of maximal length, which means that everything that this guy is adjacent to is in this is in here. Now I picked that arbitrarily, which means um, every single vertex that each one of these guys is adjacent to is in the cycle itself, which means that this cycle is not connected to anything else. But since this is a connected graph, everything, um, that means this cycle must contain every single vertex in the graph and the proof is complete. Thanks for watching.